Hello, I'm Steve Sozio, one of the scholarly concentrations in clinical research faculty. Uh, and so thank you for joining the course. Thank you for just starting off in your research experience. Today we're going to be talking about the research question. And so pro uh, the objectives for our talk today, we're going to be describing the process for development of a research question. And then we'll talk about the format and the refinement of a research question. So when we think of a research question, uh, what do we think about? We think about things are, what are you going to measure? What relationships do you expect in your study? What, if any, comparisons are you making? And then finally, who do you want to generalize your results for? These things are things to consider as you pose your research question. Because really, the research question is the fundamental first step in any study that you do. I strongly, and I can't emphasize it enough, I strongly encourage you to define it before you start collecting data. And the reasons for that is because time spent up front is an investment that pays dividends. And we often find that confused studies often don't spend this initial step. They often don't actually go through these steps in their research questions. And so they actually ask confused questions. And so we're going to work on that in scholarly concentrations. I encourage you to work with your mentor and define the research question and then continue to refine it. And we'll go through some steps about how to do that. So the first part of this is trying to find your research ideas. So where can we find research ideas? One of the main places might be your clinical experience. You're starting to see things clinically in your classwork, um, as well as maybe some physicians that you've worked with as well. You might also do it through teaching. Some of the lectures that you've seen, some of the topics that you've seen, you might have an interest and excitement about those. Maybe there's some senior mentors here. Maybe there's some local experts that can give you some ideas as well. Um, maybe there's journal clubs, reading a journal article, talking with your peers about journals, journal articles. Those types of things are a rich source of research ideas. If you have the opportunity, go into scientific meetings and hearing from other experts that are in that field to see what ideas are exciting, what ideas are the next frontier. And then the other area might actually be application of methods from non-medical fields. So you might have an exciting physics project that you might then incorporate into some of the scholarly concentrations work. And then finally, introduction of new medical technologies. Uh, and so when we put all these things together, you can see that a research idea comes from many different sources. It comes from all those things together, and it ultimately is going to be developing your research idea, the thing that you're passionate about. And so the next three slides are some of the most important slides I have from this entire talk. And these are 10 suggestions that we have for picking a research question. I encourage you to come back to these slides, because these are going to be things that are going to help develop your research question, and find out the right research question for you. So the first step is you want to anticipate the results before doing the study. So the results, positive or negative, are they going to be exciting to other people? Are they going to be exciting to you? The next thing, pick an area on the basis of the interest of that outcome. If you're not interested in the outcome, if other people aren't interested in the outcome, it may not be worth doing that study or doing that research question. The next step is look for an under-occupied, what we call a niche that has potential. So is there an area that other people aren't working on or that has an additional ability for you to really add something new? That may sound strange as a medical student, but I can encourage you or to, uh, to talk with your mentor and find that area, find the place that people really are excited about but no one is really working on extensively. Again, go to talks, read papers outside your area of interest. You'll find that areas outside of medicine may be a rich source for some of those research questions. And then finally, Step five on this is building on a theme. So if you have an area that might be of interest to you, start early in that theme and then build your next research questions on that as well. So that again, establishes your niche, establishes your area of expertise, and also helps, helps build the story of that research question. We have five more of these suggestions. Uh, the next suggestion is finding a balance between high and low risk projects. And so what I mean by that is there might be a high risk project, a project that you know, may or may not be possible, but you're really excited about, you're really passionate about that. And if it actually works out, if it actually shows the results that you expect, other people will be excited about it. Low risk projects are ones that you may not be quite as excited about, but you know they're going to pay off, you know they're going to be, there's going to be some result that's going to be of some interest to other people. Um, and so having that balance between these high risk and low risk projects um, may actually help your ability to be a researcher in this area, as well as help your ability to publish in this area. 
The next step is be prepared to pursue a project to any depth necessary. So you may find additional steps in that process that you weren't anticipating. Being flexible, working through those, uh, those problems to really be able to pursue that project. What, the step eight is the, one of the hardest things. So we all have mentors that have expertise and we want to work on some of their projects, but we want to make sure that we're differentiating ourselves. This project should be partly your own. It should be something you're excited about that's working with your mentor, but it should be something really you are taking the lead on, taking the reins on part of that project. Step nine and 10 uh, are two other important things. So step nine is do not assume that outstanding clinical research is easier than outstanding basic research. Uh, that clinical research might be uh, something that actually might be difficult to actually accomplish. The basic research or even translational research where you take that basic science finding to a translational setting might actually be easier. And then step 10 I think is the most important portion of things. So focus, focus, focus. Make sure that you're focused on the project. Make sure that you carry forward that project again no matter what depth that project might take. So this slide again is one of my most important things. These last, th last two and now finally this slide are my most important for this entire talk. When the characteristics of a good research question, we can use this criteria which we call FINER, F-I-N-E-R. So FINER stands for feasible, interesting, novel, ethical, and relevant. So feasible, can you do it? Is this possible? Are you able to accomplish this? Interesting, are people excited about this? Are you excited about this? Novel, is it new for the field? Would other people say, well, this is a really impactful thing for the field? Is it ethical? None of us go out to do unethical research, but you want to make sure that this is approved by your institutional review board, um, as well as appropriate for the populations. And then finally, relevant. Um, is this going to be an important aspect of the literature to carry things forward? So I encourage you to ask each of these elements when you're proposing your research question, does this study make sense? Are other people going to be interested in the study? And then ultimately there on the right hand side is how do you feel about the project? Are you passionate about it? Are you curious about it? Are you open to it? Or are you skeptical? Are you averse? Do, if you're not interested in going in to do the research project, it may not be the right research project for you. So you should really be excited about this project and going in day in and day out, uh, no matter what depth happens, no matter what struggles might happen to this, to really be excited about this topic area. So again, I encourage you to look at those last three slides because those are probably the most important things that I would uh, suggest as you're developing your research question. But now we're going to talk about the format and the refinement of a research question. So when we think about the research question, we often think about the types of question that we might be asking. These questions might have one of two different flavors. They might be descriptive questions, and that might be describing how a population demonstrates a characteristic or maybe describing the variation of variables within different subgroups. So one example might, of this might be rates of swine flu among different population subgroups, such as by sex or age or race or country or region or state. The other format is an analytic question. So that often evaluates the relationship between two or more variables. So above I talked about the descriptive parts about swine flu. Well, here is an example of the rates of swine flu in pregnant women depend on exposure to the flu shot. So that might be an area that you want to pursue, and that's an analytic type area. When you're refining a research question, you also want to establish a single primary question around which to focus that plan. But also include a few secondary questions, things that you're also interested in that may also produce valuable conclusions. The next step in refining, I can encourage you to do this over and over again, write it down. When you write it down, use simple declarative statements, so avoid these compound sentences. Again, uh, when you have a research question that's confused, it might do make a confused study. Break the question down into smaller parts. There might be a primary question, then a secondary question. And when you write the question, that structure of the question will determine the structure of the proposal, as well as any subsequent publications that might come of it. And you can see this this research question, the development of this is really an iterative process. You're developing your research question, you're developing your study plan, you're doing that, you're talking with your mentor, you're doing that over and over again. Uh, and so that's not a one and done type of process. The next step, write a short proposal. That proposal should outline the research objectives. It should be about one to three pages in length. And typically these proposals include a hypothesis or that research question, a specific aims about what you're doing in the study, 
a basic plan of conduct or the methods there, and maybe even what the main results might look like, what you're expected to see, what a table might look like from this study. And finally, when you're refining the re research question, meet with your mentor. I, want, I encourage you to develop your research question, but your mentor has that expertise. And so meet with them, discuss that research question, and keep refining that. And again, this is an iterative process. So this is going to be repeated over and over again until you have the research question that seems right for you, that you're excited about, and also seems feasible. Again, use that finer criteria that I mentioned earlier. And so finally, the summary here, a good study starts with a well-constructed research question. I encourage you to refine, refine, and refine. Use those finer criteria to decide whether to proceed. Perform additional literature research about that research question and talk again with your mentor. So we'll work on this in scholarly concentrations throughout the rest of the course. I encourage you again that you work with your mentor to develop that research question because this really, this work up front uh, will truly impact the rest of your scholarly concentrations experience. Thank you for your time today. I encourage you and look forward to working with you for the rest of the course.